Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you all. Uh, my name is Mike Dexter Smith, and I am the president of uh, the Association of Chartered Accounts in the United States. I'm coming to you from uh, all the way from North Carolina on the night that England have just lost the semi final in the World Cup. Uh, so, a little disappointed Englishman. This interview is uh, a part of an occasional series that I plan to run um, where we highlight unique members or unique roles within our various uh, institutes around the world, our home institutes that fund us, and uh, then also to look at people that simply are paying it forward. I'm big on paying it forward, and I think it's uh, important that we, um, we all start to look around and see uh, how we are uh, uh, impacting the world. This is uh, similar to the Experts in the Ether series, and you're able to find these both on our website and on our LinkedIn page. Tonight, I am delighted to have with me, um, uh, oops, and I'm going to just miss out, uh, Gugu Makanya, correct, Gugu, I apologize for the uh, pronunciation. She is the Senior Executive of Nation Building with the uh, with uh, South Africa's Institute of Chartered Accountants. And I thought it'd be really interesting to hear uh, her experiences of, of, of what she's done with nation building and, and one particular project in particular that we'll talk about tonight. Um, she is uh, SACA's Transformation and Growth Project Director. So Google, a big welcome from your friends at ACORS. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me. No problem. So, uh, as you see, Gugu's background are here. She is, um, she is. Wow, it's it's a it's a long title and certainly an unusual title, Gugu, for somebody. Uh, Saker's Transformation and Growth Project Director. Uh, she manages the Tutu Car. I get that right. I hope Education Uplift uh, Fund, and um, uh, holds a BA degree from the University of Zululand, and can't spell honors correctly. You got a U in it, so see we're in the states now, Gugu. So uh, we have to drop the U's. Um, but anyway, she's got experience in uh, project management, and she's going to tell us a little bit, uh, uh, Gugu, about when did you join uh, Seika? And um, Mike, thank you for having me. I joined Seika in 1997, so I've been at Seika for over 20 years now. Yeah. Um, running the transformation and growth projects. Yeah, uh, it's an unusual position. Um, we, we, and, and can you describe your role uh, within SACA? My role at SACA is literally about um, transforming the profession. If you look at the South African demographics, you'll find that 78% of the population is African and uh, is, is black, is an African. But when you look at the profession, the numbers are so skewed. The numbers are far less than that. Less than 10% of the black Africans are chartered accountants. So my role is to make sure that I bring about more black and African chartered accountants into the profession. Yeah. And 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 do you, are, are, are other organizations like SACA doing uh, the similar things? Are, are there other people with this uh, unusual title of uh, senior executive nation building? I can safely say Saika is, the, is, 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 we have gone a long way in doing this because we've been doing this for about over 15 years now. Yeah. When Tutu started, which I'm, I'm, I'm going to share with you uh, shortly. And um, we've actually, we are trailblazers, if, if I may put it that way, yeah. because we get other professions or other professional bodies are wanting to partner with us so that we can also assist them in transforming their own professions or professional bodies. That's oh, very interesting. Where, what was its, what was its uh, starting point? I mean, did somebody just look at the profession and say the demographics are all wrong, um, we need to change this, or was it something that sort of evolved over time? Absolutely. We looked at the demographics and then we like, how do we change this? And then, but firstly, we wanted to know why are there fewer Black African children accountants? What are the challenges? And then we look at where does it start? It starts at school level. Mm. Our education system very poor indeed. Mm. So we look at why, why is it poor? Maths, remember there was a time where there was maths higher grade and maths standard grade. So learners had a choice to either do maths standard grade or maths higher grade. Now there's mathematics and mathematics and maths literacy 
they have a choice to do that. Mm-hmm. So, but then if you want to be a chartered accountant, you need mathematics. Mm-hmm. So it starts at school level, promoting mathematics as a subject and then promoting SICA as an institute of chartered accountants, a home for chartered accountants in South Africa. Mm-hmm. And also identifying talent. Who are those learners that have got talent, that have got what it takes to become chartered accountants and then assist them to qualify as chartered accountants. Mm -hmm. Looking at the problems, at the challenges in terms of maths as a subject, it's literacy and and numeracy skills that was lacking, that is still lacking in our schools. So as a profession, we realize that we can assist them. Yes, we can be everything to everybody, but then as as a start, let us start at school level. And then let's move on to also look at at undergraduate level, what are the what are the issues at undergraduate level? What are the challenges at undergraduate level? Now that we have these learners from school who have um, what it takes to become chartered accountants, because we've identified them, they still don't have finances to go and study further. So that is at undergraduate level, where we then give them bursaries to study further, do a degree, so that they can proceed into the next level on their journey of becoming chartered accountants. I think, uh, are you a group of one? Are you you by yourself or do you have a group of people that work for you, Gugu? We've got a group of people within SICA. There's a department called Nation Building. Mm -hmm. And um, there is, I'll tell you now why it's called Nation Building, because it's not necessarily only about uh, developing chartered accountants, Mm -hmm. but I'll pop that for later as to what is it that the profession is doing for the community. What Nation Building or maybe rather SICA want to enhance the value of the profession. And I'm sure you've read in the news what's happening in South Africa with the profession with site with you know. So we enhancing the value of the profession through these programs. There's many other initiatives that Psyca runs to make sure that the value of the profession is being enhanced. But as far as transformation and growth is concerned, we look at we we're contributing towards the education. We're contributing towards the creation of employment for the youth, which is in line with our national development plan in South Africa. Are, 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 I'm, I'm interested, are other countries in, 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 in Africa looking at your program, uh, Gugu? Yes, because we've got a reciprocity with other African countries like Swaziland, um, Zimbabwe, they're writing our own exams, Namibia. We've been asked at some point to go to Namibia to share what we do in our schools programs in education. Um, so there are other countries that are looking into what we're doing and then they want to learn more about what we're doing. Mm. As far as care guidance or care awareness is concerned. Yeah, it, it is a, it is a, the, 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 I'll come back to it, but the Tutu uh, education, it is a fund. So, so how, how do you go about fundraising? Is that, is that something you're responsible for as well? Yes. What, how we go about fundraising the profession, which is now your accounting firms, your um, auditing firms, they put in money into this fund. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, and, 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 and it's a, Section 21 organization company, yeah. and then they put in funds into this pool so that we can develop chartered accountants. For instance, um, a firm will put in um, or just over a million for 20, 10 to 20 students so that they can go to university and become chartered accountants. So we've got a number of donors. It's not only the accounting firms, you also get um, commerce and industry organizations that are putting in money into this, into the Tutuka Peso Fund, and they're contributing to the accountancy profession. So do, do you use it as a, a, a sort of a, like a scholarship approach? Uh, so it's sort of a one-to-one relationship. So you build, so people aren't just putting money in into a pool, they're putting in to, to, to help one individual through the process or how have you approached it from that point of view? It's a bursary and then um, it takes four years and um, well it takes four years at, an, at, 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 a, at a university um, for, for your education so um, it pays for those, it pays for the stipend of the students, it pays for the books, it pays for residence it pays for also, um, I did mention the allowance that these uh, students get because these are students from the historically disadvantaged backgrounds. Mm. So when they get their stipends, it's sometimes the only uh, income mm. that that learner or that student gets, which is going to assist in their homes. So they take this money, they send it home, which is the only source of income that they get. Mm. Clever as they are, However, they still need to eat, 
their families need to eat also. So the fund pays for the schools, I mean, for the books that like I mentioned, and for tuition, obviously. And then up until you finish your honours degree, and then you move on to do your traineeship, which is, I think, in the olden days, it used to be called clerkship. It's essentially the same process that all of us went through, that you, you do a degree and then essentially a master's degree on top, correct? Exactly. But then again, you, we hold you the, to, to the best of the fund. I say we hold you by the hand how it works. You get a project manager at the university. We put our students in a cohort of 50 at first year. And then they've got a project manager who is a CA, ideally, that is looking after these students. And then up until they finish their undergraduate degrees and their honours degrees, up until they then get into learnerships. Mm -hmm. So we allocate these students when they're ready for learnerships into these accounting firms. They, add, they want to go to the accounting firms or they want to go to, to commerce and industry. We allocate them to make sure that eventually they qualify as chartered accountants. Yeah. I'll come back to the the, the, the uh, program in a second, but but I did pull up. You you were very kind to send me this uh, 2017 nation building impact report, which which I would point out to all the members that are listening, it is something all of us should take a look through and and and, and have a good read through. It's a, a wonderful document, and I'm sorry I chopped the top off here on my slide, but um, I will post uh, on our website the actual link to this report uh, well worth a read uh, spend a few minutes uh, looking through it members um d d do something for me uh, uh google if you may but j just describe what is in this report this was your first ever report or do you do one every year we do one every year this is our second one in the men i need to stand this yeah um showing impact of our initiatives what is it that they how are we building the nation mm -hmm. just so that everybody knows what like I said, we're promoting the value of the profession. So this is what our members all together, this is their contribution, together with obviously the staff that work at SICA mm -hmm. and our members, because our members do get involved in, in, in assisting us in running these initiatives. They add financial support, they add giving their time to assist us in, our, in some of our programs. I was talking to Michelle earlier on and then I was telling her, about a schools program that we run with the school governing bodies. It's a financial management um, a program where we, add more, where we, we are actually, um, um, sorry, it, it, the, the word is just um, mentor our CAs. We partner CAs with the schools mm -hmm. to look at the finances of the schools and the management of the finances and administration of the finances as well as gov governance mm -hmm. because if you look at the school the composition of the school governing bodies some of them they illiterate so now who is better to assist them in making sure that their finances are sound and they're efficient as the CAs so they give of their time freely to assist these schools to make sure that at the end of the day they submit a report a financially sound report a financial annual report and they've got a budget two mm -hmm. things that we into. Now, the, the, the Tutu program is, 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 is just one part, though, of this nation building report, correct? I mean, it's, uh, is it the major part or is it, is it uh, you know, are there other, uh, other programs within it? All our, all our transformation initiatives, they are under the umbrella of the Tutuga Education Upliftment Fund. Okay. So everything that we do, it runs under that umbrella, under that board. Mm -hmm. And did you, did you pick out a number of uh institutions a number of colleges that that, that that would support you in this or or is this right across south africa that these uh these individuals can go to go to college first and then uh move on to become child accountants it's right across south africa we've got right. yes in all the provinces we've got universities we've got about 11 universities that we work with right. in um you know to the base of the fund where we find those students to become child accountants we've recently Actually, not recently, since 2012, we've started working with the historically disadvantaged universities. These are the universities that are not necessarily accredited by SICA to, um, for become accounting or for, for child accountants profession. Mm -hmm. These uh, institutions, we partner them with the um, white institutions like your University of Cape Town, University of Johannesburg, as alliance partners so that these in, to capacitate these universities so that eventually when the students get graduated from these universities, they can go to any psychiatric accredited institution and they can do their honors. Whereas in the past, 
they wouldn't be allowed to do so. They would have to do a bridging program. So now by partnering with these other universities who are FACA accredited, therefore the students that get graduated out of these institutions, they can now just be allowed to go and do their honors and finish their, 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 their degrees and, and in their way of becoming each other accountants. Mm -hmm. and, and you mentioned that they were bursaries. Um, uh, uh, uh. A, a, a term that could could mean a number of things, but uh, I don't have to pay them back is the most important thing, I, I presume. No, you don't have to pay them back. I mean, you know, you should just free education in South Africa. Mm. So, uh, yeah, they, they don't have to pay back, but all they need to do, they need to pass. They need to make sure that they finish their articles. They need to make sure that they register as the members of the, of the South African School of Children Accountants. Mm. So they can get the designation of CASA. Mm. Mm -hmm. And 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 when, when does when, when does all this start? I mean, lead me through. Here, here are I don't know what grade are you at when you start identifying kids that are probably more science and math oriented than they are. I mean, than they are perhaps arts oriented. How 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 has that process gone about? Okay, we look at the landscape of our schools. We're looking at the schools that are best performing, which are best performing schools, and then that are also um, getting met at, at at least 60% in terms of the meds as a subject. So we need to understand your landscape because you can't be everything to everyone, like I mentioned before. You also can't waste your time and go to the schools that are only doing that literacy with the with, with the learners. So we'll target those schools that we show we that we know they do maths, mathematics, and then they are achieving best results so that we can identify talent at that level. So now at grade, at the lower grades, which would be your grade seven and eight to nine, yeah. we promote mathematics as a subject, make sure choose maths as a subject because they get to choose their subjects in, when they're in grade nine. So yeah. we start in seven subject choices, mathematics, mm -hmm. do mathematics because we don't want to confuse the kids also at that stage. They won't understand certain things. So it's about at the, the good subject choices that you have mm. so that they can take you to if your gateway subject, your math, your English, all of those subjects. So that also, if you don't, even if you don't want to be a CA, you can still be an engineer because yeah. they also need mathematics. So we promote the subject mathematics from the grade. And then grade 10, 11 and 12, we run what you call school camps where we take learners away for a period of five to seven days and then we teach them academic, academic support for them in terms of the subject, gateway subject. We also have life skills. These are the skills that they don't necessarily get taught in these schools, but they will need when they go to tertiary. So it's more tertiary preparedness at that level, yeah. which is great. I, I, I pulled I pulled one slide out of, of, of the um, of, of the report, which I, I thought was rather interesting, which was um, the number of learners, and, and I'm sorry, when did the, the program began with you back in the late 90s, uh, Gugu? 2000, yes. 2000? So since 2000, am I right in thinking you, you, you put 141,000 through through various, uh, this, this process? Absolutely. Like I said, we have to know our landscape and then that's, that, that's where we, we, we go. It's, it's, that's a lot of, and, and, but you're also teaching teachers. So there's a program there for encouraging teachers, what, to teach math and science as well? It's, it's economic and management sciences, but that's at the lower grades, because mm -hmm. what happens in our schools in South Africa, at the lower grades, you get those teachers who are not there. Firstly, they will allocate teachers to grade um, to your further education and training level, which is your grade 10 to grade 12. Mm -hmm. They will allocate the math teachers into those grades. Then you get the teachers who are maybe teaching biology, religion, or um, social science, and or economics, and then they allocate those to the lower levels. Mm -hmm. And then accounting is also it's called it's 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 a it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a combination that is called EMS, which is economic economics management sciences. It's economics um, business. Um, business economics as well as accounting. So those teachers, they're not necessarily accounting teachers, but then they are expected to teach accounting at that level. Mm. What that does to a learner, they hate accounting because they're being taught by somebody who's not necessarily qualified to teach a subject, but because there is a need, there's lack of capacity at that level, they will use those educators to teach at that level. So what happens, those educators will just go on a course for about a week or two in accounting content and then they're expected to 
change the mindset of the learner at, at that level. So surely mm. that doesn't work. So mm. how we assist them is to make sure that they've got confidence in the, in the, in the, in the subject, in the accounting subject. So that by the time they impact the knowledge to the learner, at least the learner can actually be excited about the subject and maybe also want to know about the chartered accounting as a profession. Mm. Though you don't need accounting to be a CA, you need mathematics, but the association may somehow trigger something to the learner that they may want to become sort of accountants. Right. Yeah. I, I see a number which I've rather unfortunately chopped off, but that you've reached 80% of South Africa's high schools. That's a, that's a very incredible number. Yes. Mm. There's about 6,660 high schools. Remember I said we choose our landscape based on the best performing schools. So 60% and above. So the 80% of the schools that I'm talking about out of the, six, the, the 6,660 schools, um, those are the ones that we've targeted. Those mm. are the schools that are producing 60% and above mm. in terms of max marks. I mean, that's, that's, that's 141,000. I mean, that's changing a lot of lives out there. I mean, I'm, I, I'm always impressed by numbers and that's a, that's a big number of kids that you've touched. Um, in one way or another, um, and I congratulate you for it. I I was a little disturbed by the accounting Olympiads. I'm glad Price Waterhouse didn't put me through one of those when I was uh, <laughs> going for my chart accountancy many years ago. But what is an accounting Olympiad? An accounting Olympiad, you know, there's Mets, there's Science Olympiad and there's Mets Olympiad, and oh. then we're we're approached by um, Sage Pastel to run an accounting Olympiad because they're saying a nine out of 10 accountants, they use pastel as a package. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to promote that. And then they asked us to run this um, Olympiad for them. So mm -hmm. it's basically for grades um, 10, 11, and 12. Yeah. Um, just then it's getting, you know, writing in a paper and then you got the winners out of that. It has become so popular that we now have a junior accounting Olympiad also. We started as a senior accounting Olympiad and now there's a junior accounting Olympiad. Wow. That's how we also promote the, the, the subject accounting because the le most of the learners, they don't take accounting at school. I, I, I have to say, I bet you put a few, a few thousand miles on your frequent flyer points uh, with, uh, with um, South African Airways, I would guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good way to run them up, I would think. But I, yeah. I am impressed. That I, I see over on the left-hand side, uh, schools, learners, educators and parents. Uh, the, I'm interested, how do the parents react? Because I mean, surely many of these kids are, it's, it's the first time they've perhaps seen a, a, a professional side of life. Mm -hmm. What we started is a parental involvement um, initiative mm -hmm. where we talk to parents about, they need to get involved in their children's education. Mm -hmm. We then run workshops for these parents. And then we don't necessarily, like I said, we're a nation building department. We don't necessarily only promote, um, we, only, we don't only develop children accounting. So how this works is that we'll put, uh, we'll have parents and then we'll have different professionals that come from the area where we have those parents. And then we'll have an engineer, we'll have a doctor, we'll have an SCA, and then we will just talk about getting involved in your children's education what was the what was the subject mm. that was that that made you to be where you are? The gateway subject, and it, it, one common subject is mathematics. It's again mm. promoting mathematics, yeah. and then to say, because remember when children choose their subject at school, yes, they'll listen to the teacher, but eventually they're going to go home and speak to their parents about it. Yeah. So we better inform the parents about what is necessary for their kids, so that when they choose the subject, it's from also from an informed decision from their parents, not only from the, from their teachers. Because in South Africa, you find that the, 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 the schools, or rather the teachers, they want, they want quantity than quality. You'll find that the school has a produced 80% pass rate, but then if you then quantify that, or, or qualify that, you'll look, you find that most of those learners per school, they're doing mathematics, math literacy, which is a problem. I'm interested actually by your, as, as a venture capitalist in, a, in in my real world for my real job, um, mm. but the uh, but the business games is kind of interesting. I think uh, um, I, I used to talk, teach sort of a, a level of entrepreneurship uh, 
in, in the schools. And it's kind of interesting what the kids come up with and um, how you can really get them excited about something. Uh, kids that are just not very excited about school sometimes, but are get, can get excited about an idea that they may have. Um, I, I put up these success stories. I always like to go through success stories. Um, uh, I, I, I won't even try and pronounce a, a surname, but talent was 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 kind of an interesting one. I, I you, you need someone who will believe in you. I mean, I think this is the the all, the all important aspect. Um, mm. uh, and I, I did read her background. I thought it was very very interesting and, and rather touching uh, where she'd come from and. Uh, um, also, Kotso, um, where he'd come from as well, I thought was 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 very intriguing. So I congratulate you on all these. And any does any does, does any of these stand out for you? I mean, you you obviously know these people, I presume. Well, the, this is just a this is just a few of them, but we've got many of these. Um, yep. One of the guys that was now he was also here in New York, working in New York. They they're all over the place actually. Yep. And some of us are offered to the students because our programs, like I said, they start at school and then they feed into into um, undergraduate, postgraduate, and until they qualify, as you rightfully see this. Remember, I spoke about the camps, and then if you read these uh, stories about the students, they also. And um, they undergone. Some of them went to the camp. Some of them wrote their account in Olympiad, which is when they first got to hear about Saika, or through a career development that we went to do in the school, and that's how they began. So you begin to see. That's why it's called the impact report. So you begin to see the impacts of our initiatives. Yeah. Where, where where are these people? Where there's it's quite a number of them. Some of them they also serve in our board, the board of Saika. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm I, I was. I was impressed i was um it's always interesting where you come from and um how, how you how you gain how, how you how you move up in the world over the course of time um what comes next uh what does tutu uh what does tutu have in uh, or what does gugu have in uh, store for us over the next few years with this program well like well now we okay we're doing we we promoting we're developing chartered accountants but then we also know that the world does not necessarily only need chartered accountants we need actuaries we need um we need engineers mm -hmm. and then we need a different ca which maybe has got all these other skills that not necessarily about numbers you know we need interpersonal skills mm -hmm. we need um maybe we need creatives actually yeah. you know yeah. so we need to look at other professions as well yeah. and maybe this promote the professions together with these other professional bodies like your extra sciences your or your engineers mm -hmm. and then because we're all looking at the same pool mm -hmm. then as that we met which is a very minute number if you look at the numbers no, so we all look I, I i i certainly congratulate you what you've achieved i i i did mention to you um uh, offline before we started this interview that uh here at a course I, i'm Big believer in, in in sort of giving back to the community. I think all of us have done extremely well here in the U.S. and uh, we're very lucky to be here in so many ways. Some of us might think we're unlucky at the moment, but uh, but but mainly lucky. Um, and and we're we're looking at uh, we have a group in New York now uh, of which Michelle, who is with you uh, at the moment, uh, uh, Michelle is a part of something we're going to be calling Get the Giving Back, the A Course Giving Back program, which is going to look at financial literacy. And I just wondered if you've got any ideas for us on um, on what we might uh, what we might look at, what we might achieve. Uh, wh what are the roadblocks ahead? Um, just a few ideas from you. You've been uh, you've been down this road in so many ways. I was talking to Michelle also earlier. Remember, I also mentioned about our school governing body um, um, project um, in terms of financial literacy. However, if you've got the, the when the when the when the students get the bursary fund. Look at think of a child that who has never had money and all of a sudden they have money. Mm. They don't know what to do with that. Mm. So they definitely need to know how do you save? Mm. You know, the interest rates, you you know, don't take don't just take any loan, mm. you know, because you've got to pay interest. So when they get bursaries, they need to know what does it mean that I've got a bursary? What does it mean that I'm gonna get an allowance? Mm. An allowance is only for a month, and then what happens in the next month? What happens, for instance, also when they get bursaries and then they study far, like in Cape Town, studying in Cape Town, you need to get a flight ticket to go back home. Do you really need to study in Cape Town? Why don't you study where you are as long as it's a second accredited university? So we look at all of those, the budgeting, um, savings, and um, we work with a financial services board also mm -hmm. in terms of making sure that we promote financial literacy to, mm -hmm. to our learners. 
-hmm. and then um, the business game is also one of the of the of the board games that we run promoting that also because they have to make decisions they have to you know um to solve problems yeah. you know they have to buy things and then they have to you know think about what they do with their money good 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 um I, i'm going to stop us there um i'm going to thank you very much uh I hope you've enjoyed your time in uh, New York, uh, which is where you are at the moment. Um, I, I assume not your first time in New York. No, it's not my first time. I've been coming here. I haven't just I've been for two years, yeah. but I've been coming every year before that. Good. Good. Well, I hope you enjoy New York, um, and I hope to actually meet with you at some point in time. Um, and, and my thanks to Michelle for uh, organising this for us. Um, to all of our members, we, we, we hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, you'll be able to uh, uh, listen to this again. Um, and as I uh, listen to this again, both on our uh, LinkedIn page and also uh, across on our website, um, and I'm sure probably we'll be able to get it out onto the SACA website as well if uh, if it passes muster with SACA, um, which I'm sure it will. Um, and uh, uh, also be aware that we are starting this uh, giving back program. It's sort of got its... Uh, starting point now out of New York. And um, I, I thank all of our members that are involved in that. And if you are uh, not on our LinkedIn uh, group, our ACAS LinkedIn group, please get yourself on there. It's uh, 3,000 members strong now, on well on the way to 4,000. And uh, when I get to 5,000, I, I might be a bit happier. Um, so help me get to the 5,000 and that will be an enormous value for you. We are also, um, for the members, we're also looking at uh, badging you, giving you badges for your LinkedIn uh, page. This will indicate that you've got um, international experience of one sort or another, that you're an, a SACA member and the rest so that somebody can search on those badges and also look on your LinkedIn uh, profile and uh, see those badges. Uh, my thanks once again to Gugu. Uh, Gugu, it was uh, a delight speaking with you. And uh, I shall say uh, good evening uh, to you all. Thank you very much, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, Gugu. Thank you so much, Mike. Thank you for having me. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I'm, I'm trying to stop it recording. I was saving to my computer at the moment. Um, so my thanks to you, uh, Michelle. Thank you for sorting it out. And Google, I hope to uh, get together with you at some point in time uh, in the future. Absolutely. I would love that. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much, you two. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay.